and uh, to start, and Denise, are you recording? Yeah, so it's recording. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Denise. All right. Good morning. Uh, this is the meeting of the Mongrove Economic Development Commission and Due to the governor's statewide disaster declaration relating to the COVID-19 pandemic and current public health guidelines for social distancing, I've determined that it is not prudent for the members of the Economic Development Commission or staff to convene in person for this morning's meeting. Therefore, members of the EDC are attending this meeting by video conference. Those same conditions require barring to the public for in-person att attendance. In light of those limitations, the public is invited to attend and listen to the meeting through Zoom platform or by phone, as indicated on the meeting agenda. To comply with the Open Meetings Act requirements for virtual meetings, this morning's meeting is being recorded. So uh, it struck me, though, this morning as I was getting ready for the meeting that uh, we may be coming close to the point where we, uh, if it's warm enough, we might have a meeting outside someplace because uh, under the new guidelines, I guess we could do a a group of six or seven, as long as we're socially distanced and outside, but uh, just the same, seven in the morning is awfully early to be getting your act together to get any place. Jennifer brought a friend this morning, thank you. Yes, Johnny, this is Johnny. He's <laughs> very engaged this morning. Nice cat. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Is that a voting yeah. member? Is that a voting yeah. member of the committee? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Very good. All right. Um, the minutes of the last meeting. Any suggestions, corrections? Okay. Uh, a motion to approve? Motion to approve. A second? I'll second. Roger, Thank do you. we want to do a roll call? make it official thank you that's a good, good point very good point <laughs> yeah uh, um, well, let's see is anybody opposed to the motion to approve no i didn't think so but anyway uh who's here pam roll call us uh, mike elliott i'm here erwin steinberg here jay levin mina hall and roger all right, we're all here. We can all hear each other. And uh, first order of business is what's usually at the top of the agenda. Bring yourselves up to date on uh, the various groups that we try to partner with. Uh, the International Council of Shopping Centers, uh, the uh, HLGDBA, and uh, anybody have any inputs? Yeah, I do. Um, also, is, is Amy there? I'm sorry, I don't see who. Is Amy Gaten there? Okay, well, she's uh, she represents the uh, Downtown Association. Anyway, um, I had a few updates. One is from um, Lake County Partners. And I did exchange emails with Bethany Williams um, about that infrastructure list that they're creating. And uh, she, you know, it, it's kind of a priority list of what the county wants to work on. And uh, she indicated that they're pretty early in this. It's gonna take about 10 to 12 months. And they've issued an RFP to hire a consultant to work um, at, on the needed infrastructure sites. And as part of that effort, they wanna identify opportunities for major development or redevelopment that also have significant job generating potential as well as what the infrastructure gaps are in develop, developing the county. They, I asked her, what, what's the benefit of being on the list? Because that's what we were talking about last time. <laughs> I, wanna spend, we, I don't think we want to spend a great deal of time on this if there's no um, really outcome. But um, she said at this point, they don't have additional resources, but uh, they want to understand what the needs are and uh, in order to develop sites and Lake County partners will pursue funding um, from federal and state opportunities once they get a better handle on what's needed. So 
I guess we should stay tuned and just keep on top of it. It may make sense at some point for us to try to identify a couple of um, needs that you know we have, of course, which we, you know, which we've discussed at length at different times. You know, um, public water would be one. Um, you know, you mentioned Roger. I think high speed um, internet. Internet, yeah. you know, is another. So I, I'll keep on top of this with um, with Bethany Williams of Lake County Partners, and when they get give us more direction on uh, how they're gonna do all of this and what the outcomes will be, we can consider whether we want to um, maybe develop some, uh, you know, develop a, a summary of what we need and we can, you know, ask Jim Hogue, you know, of course, to help us with this about what is necessary for us to get public water and how it would help develop long growth and our economic opportunities so i'll i'll uh yeah you know, i'll try to report on this once in a, you know uh every every couple of meetings it, i think ultimately we should if they feel they can get us some you know grants or resources we definitely should um work on this and try to add what we need in long growth to this list but again i want to make sure i know exactly what they're looking for and what they're going to do for us. Hey, uh, does anybody else have any thoughts on, on what infrastructure would be beneficial to Long Grove? I, and I, you know, the plumbing is pretty narrow focus, but I'm thinking also in terms of um, the region, a little bit beyond the village, because I like the phrase, a rising tide floats all boats. If our neighbors are doing well, it all flows over into our area too. And if uh, somebody has, you know, if Mundelein does well and gets a lot of relatively heavy duty business, we don't have the zoning or the land for it, but if they get it, that means people and people mean business. And that's all good for us in the, in the long run. Um, any, any thoughts, anybody else? One thing that, I mean, I would love to see happen is that whole, the, the Illinois 53 um, passage turned into like a green corridor, like bike path that would connect a bunch of communities. I think, I, you know, I know that some communities are still pushing for that 53 extension, but if that could somehow be given up and that turned into like a really beautiful green space with pathways, I think that would add a lot of we don't, you know, the North Shore has that, the Plains River has that. We don't really have that further west. That's, that's one of these soft infrastructure things that does bring development in, in indirect ways, I think. Or when you had a... No, I think that's a good idea. One of the things that um, um, we've been talking about for years is the whole technology infrastructure, you know, with, and I don't know if I'm using the right term, you know, broadband, whatever it may be, speed. Do you think the providers like in Xfinity or at and they must do studies for our area as to how they're gonna expand. Would it make sense to find out what their thinking is for Long Grove? And then, and then we could um, maybe promote that, you know, or, or get some dollars from that somewhere. Um, I just don't know what the issue is. Erwin, I don't know who the 312 number is, but. Could they mute? There's a lot of feedback coming through. Oh, sorry, that is me. And I had been trying to speak oh. when Pam was asking whether I was here. Oh. Oh, and, okay. But yes, I've got the 95 right by me. I think that's 95. It's going over past the Everglades. Oh, I will okay. mute. Sorry. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm deaf in one ear. So background noise makes it really difficult to hear anything. <laughs> So, yeah, so anyway, I, I think maybe, maybe, I'm sure there've been some studies on that by the providers, whoever's going to invest the money, you know, our, the, the, the technology people. May, and I don't know who to contact, but may, maybe they've done a study and say, you know, Long Grove isn't set for 10 years because of X, Y, Z, or that's on our three-year plan to go to high-speed internet or something like that. Um, there used you know, to be a contract I, between the village and uh, the the cable provider for service uh, franchise okay. that, that that set you know what the terms were and what came here. I don't 
um, let's let's talk to. I'll talk to, I guess, Balling, or I'll start with uh, Manager Balling and okay. see if they can tell us whether they still have that and whether that would be a, a door, because I think that's a really good lead, Erwin. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's great. So you'll check to see um, what the plans are for uh, what we have and what the plans whether, are. Whether there's even a franchise anymore, what, you know, who, who controls the cable providing in this area. Okay. Yeah, no, that that's those are good suggestions, and we can you know just keep tabs on it because, I mean, they're focusing on job creation, but I agree with you, Roger. It's really a a more macro issue. You know, if we have adequate resources, you know, in in the region, um, you know, people will come, and I, I guess that is kind of their focus too. You know, being that they're you know they're looking at Lake County as a whole. And, you know, of course, we're going to focus on Long Grove, you know, but, um, you know, there, there is that regional focus. So um, we'll just keep tabs on it and uh, see what we can do. Um, one other thing good. I wanted to talk about um, just briefly, I, I was wondering, I, I don't think Amy's um, with us today, but no. I'll mention this to her. The... Um, there was introduced a bill in the house um, for another COVID relief bill for economic support for restaurants. <clears throat> and um, it's, it's got a long name, but basically it's a restaurant act of 2021. And uh, it's going to make grants available. It's through the, uh, the treasury department and um, they're going to prioritize awarding grants initially for underrepresented communities. So I don't know if that's not going to be us. But and um, secondly, award grants to uh, food and beverage purveyors with annual revenues of less than 1.5 million in 2019. Um, and so I mean, I think it's something worth looking into. Um, the problem with it is if an entity has received a loan under the PPP program, they're not going to be eligible. So I don't know if it's going to be a, a great resource, but again, it's something at least we can make the downtown and our restaurants aware of. It's, you know, it's a different grant. It's through the Treasury Department. It's not the SBA. You know, we've been talking about the SBA the last couple and PPP is through the SBA. So it is a separate grant. I don't know that it's passed yet through the um, through the entire Congress. So again, you know, we'll report on this. But um, it is, you know, if if it's helpful to someone, that's great. I mean, I think it's a little bit limited because you know, if you've gotten PPP funds, you're not eligible. But it's worth reporting on anyway. Could we get Pam, the gentleman from the Illinois Restaurant Association who spoke to us, maybe on the agenda for the next meeting for 10 minutes to give us an update? I mean, I'm sure he's so you know, attuned to this. And, yeah, and that's, maybe... that's a good idea because the contact we made at the um, Illinois Restaurant Association yeah. is kind of a communications director. And yeah. I think he's pretty willing to... I don't know if we get Sam Toya to talk to us, but we don't, you know, the, the gentleman who has been working with us seems pretty available. So I'll see if he can join us at the next meeting. Right. And let, let's communicate with the downtown association to see if, if uh, they can send out something to all their uh, members that we're having this gentleman speak about some additional benefits. They may know about it, but um, I don't think it hurts. We can join them in, the business people in to that. Right, right. This is probably a really good time because the, the rules are changing now. You know, I, we, I think we've probably all been watching the news and the, the number of people that you can have in has it changed, it's larger, and there are some questions about what the rules really are. I heard that I may have to carry my COVID cards with me to prove that I'm vaccinated so I can get into restaurants like a, an easy pass to get into places. <laughs> but, but, uh, oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Um, Amy but, is on the call. I don't know if this would be a good time for Amy to step in. 
Amy, where are you? I asked her are to you... mute herself, but I don't yeah. know. Oh, I'm sorry, Amy. I didn't know you were on the call. Um, I'll keep up with you, you know, up to date with you on what's going on with this separate um, restaurant grant program. Um, again, you know, I don't know how useful it's going to be, but it doesn't hurt to get information on it. And uh, I'll see what we, when it passes, I'll make sure to let you and everybody else in the Restaurant Association know. Uh, I'm sorry, the Downtown Association. So and, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Um, so I know some of our restaurants have done stellar in 2020. Um, I don't know who specifically has taken a PPP, um, but I will certainly pass this uh, on. And, you know, I know Village Tavern has struggled. I, I do know that. I know Joni's has flourished. Um, and, you know, we're not all restaurants, uh, Broken Earth and um, uh, the brewery, I know, have done, at least uh, the brewery is doing amazing. Um, but I will definitely pass this on. I've got that it is through the Treasury Department, Restaurant Act of 2021, and that's awesome. Amy, could yeah. you update us on what the, how the meeting went last week about the um, festivals? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, unfortunately, I could not hear almost any word from where I was in St. Augustine. Everything was reverberate, reverberating. But I did uh, speak with Terry uh, last night. And um, so here's the update on Chocolate Fest. Um, there's going to be kind of three things going on. Um, we've got a, I believe it's going to be an Archer parking lot. She didn't say that, but I thought that's kind of what I heard. Uh, there would be an exposition tent and a experience tent. So it would be things like um, being taught to cook with chocolate. Um, there would be a chocolate fountain that, you know, you could get, well, I think there, somebody would be doing it and then putting it on. They're being very mindful of COVID and samples. So I think it's kind of everything would be prepackaged, that sort of thing. Um, so there's, it will go on for three days. There is a VIP experience um, Friday night, and that will be like entertainment and chocolate focus. Then um, on the Saturday and Sunday would be the two tents plus um, on Robert Parker Coffin Road will be um, chocolate uh, proprietor. So anybody from the downtown could be there also, but we will have other chocolate companies come in and set up booths. So it's going to be the most chocolatey chocolate fest, although that's not what it's going to be called. <laughs> it will be called For the Love of Chocolate, a Long Grove Chocolate celebration, I think, off the top of my head. Um, so let's see. Uh, there will be different things going on on Saturday and Sunday. So it will be $20 for Saturday or Sunday, or you could do $75 for the whole weekend. Uh, that includes the VIP and then both days. Um, so that basically sums it up. It should be, I mean, the numbers should be pretty amazing because we know there are a lot of people who will easily plunk down $75 for a chocolate weekend experience. And we're very excited about it. Yeah, it sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, I think it will be. That really is great. Yeah, I, you know, um, probably it's a great opportunity for, um, just, you know, publicity through different media, because it sounds like a fabulous event. I think it will be. Yep. And we've got our Jody to, uh, to get word out there. So I have a feeling, I mean, some of the businesses are actually a little concerned that we may have too many people in town that weekend. Um, but we can certainly cap it with the, um, you know, with ticket sales. And there will also be other things going on that 
we are hoping that the restaurants will, you know, play ball with us and do chocolatey things at their own establishments. Um, but there will also be other things that people who do just kind of come into town for other reasons um, will get to partake in. But, you know, the, the tents are exclusively with your ticket. Oh, the tents are with your ticket. I see. Now, you were mentioning, yeah. Amy, that there's other um, chocolate purveyors who are going to be there. Are they other yeah. than... Um, obviously, you're going to have like Morks and, you know, uh, but you're saying all other companies outside of ones in Long Grove? Yeah. Yep. I don't know specifically who they are, but I did hear that there were a bunch of people who were, had been told what was going on. And they said, as soon as you've got the go ahead, we are ready to roll. We love the idea. Um, so, you know, I, I remember like Punta. Punta Chocolate Company, I believe, they'd been here a couple of years ago, uh, and they were amazing. So I'd imagine that they had a lot of success that year. I'm sure they, they're coming. So it'll be, yeah, a lot of different chocolate providers, purveyors um, that will be on that, on Robert Parker Coffin. And I don't think that you need the ticket to go shop there. Oh, that's I mean, interesting. That's probably what, you know, anybody who walks into town, you know, why would we bar anybody from making sales, chocolate sales? But definitely the exposition and the um, experience tent uh, are ticketed events. And so, you know, it, it, it will be worthy of your $20. Yeah, that sounds great. So I think a number of years ago, I don't know if it was the Food Network or, you know, I just have a vague memory. Yes. It could have been like 10 years yes. ago. Anthony Anderson. Yep. Anthony well, Anderson from the, it was Strawberry Fest in maybe like 2017 or 16. I do forget. But he was from the Food Network. He had, it was a television show that he was working on for festivals. Right. And I remember they did, they did talk about, they did have a segment on Long Grove chocolate. Um, and, you know, it was, you know, it was really interesting and it kind of got a national, it gave Long Grove a national presence. So that's oh, something. That maybe it wasn't, or maybe they did mention the chocolate, but it was definitely, he was here for Strawberry Fest. So maybe you're speaking of something else that I'm not yeah, thinking of. I, I think that I am, Amy. I'll try to look back, you know, on, you know, on the internet and see what it was. Cause it was a, it was a long time ago. It was 10 or 15 years ago that they oh. had, it was, they, they had named the chocolate fest in Long Grove as the, one of the premier chocolate events in the country. And I'll, oh, I'll, wow. I'll look in the archives and see where, what, I, if I could send you something on that. Cause it gave us so much publicity, of course, you know, so maybe that's something that can be we, All good, we yeah. uh, engineered. <laughs> what weekend yeah. is this planned for now? So this is, um, let's see. Oh, geez. That's um, still in April. Calendar. Usually like the weekend after. Okay, don't quote me on this, but it is likely um, May 15th, 16th, 17th, or 21, 22, 23. It's one of those two. My apologies. I could not hear a thing, and that was one thing that was not covered in my rundown. Okay. Um, maybe while you're here, and this kind of jumps to the next topic on the agenda, we've been doing these how'd you do it videos, and uh, maybe a video of somebody who's done well at the fest might be worth uh, pulling together. Uh, Amy, do you think that? Do, we could find maybe not a, a Long Grove store, but a, a repeat vendor uh, who's not selling tchotchkes, but selling, you know, something like that chocolate. Do you think they might, uh, because no matter where they are, we can zoom to them and have a discussion with them. I like it. I think that's great. Why come to Long Grove for a, what's, what was the yeah. chocolate company you mentioned? A Punta was uh, one of the, 
two that were just spectacular. I forget the name of the other one. And I don't know that they ever came to more than one chocolate fest. Um, but I will circle with um, with John Kopecki, and he's you know he's been in town forever. He may even have the information that you're seeking on that 10 to 15 years ago chocolate fest. I'm sure John will know, and I could reach out to him today. That I'll make a note to chase you down on email next week and see if we can't get that going. That, that yeah, another, interesting. Okay. Another another subject that could be good for how'd you do it would be Morks. Because they started, of course, in, um, you know, kind of Palatine. in the Palatine, in Palatine, Palatine yep. area. And With now donuts, they've yep. expanded to Long Grove. And why did they, I, I just realized that was something maybe we could have thought, you know, we could do. Because they um, are, they expanded to Long Grove. And why did they do it? You know, because they've been in business for a long time in Palatine. Does anybody yeah. know one of the Morg family? Well, she does not do. own it anymore. It is now run by Eric Waller from town. His dad is now the owner of it. So she did step out maybe like two years ago. So that may not work just because of that. She was the one who brought it to town, but then stepped away. Well, I'm assuming that she would say that it worked out well, and she would have some reasons for why she brought it to town from down on Route 12. So... She still she owns the original. Does she still own the one in Palatine, or did he buy both of them? Yeah. Nope. She owns the one in Palatine. She just stepped away from the Long Grove one, and Eric's uh, dad had bought it. Eric is the one from uh, the popcorn shop in Covered Bridge uh, Creamery. Okay. Yeah. Who do, who do we think would be better to approach? Um, I'll have to mull that one over. Uh, there may be very few that have been chocolate related who have come every year. And, you know, it really has gotten very sad over the last few years at how unchocolatey our chocolate fest had become. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was well. a lot of complaints about too many bath fitters and things like that. So that's why we're all very excited at how chocolatey this chocolate <laughs> fest will be. <laughs> Hey, Amy, it's Mike. I have a quick question on that. Do you know if, if um, is, it, is it one or two or a handful of chocolate companies? Was there proactive outreach or, or was it, you know, was it a more comprehensive list of chocolate companies in the, in the area or region that, and, and was there proactive outreach done? I think that we've got some really, I think we have a lot of people excited about coming. Um, I do believe we are going to have a lot of chocolate purveyors there. I, I don't know the exact number, and uh, that is a question that I will follow up on, and I can get back to you at the next meeting. Sounds good. Excellent. And I don't mind, you know, I don't mind calling Eric Waller to see, you know, he's another one with the popcorn shop and, um, you know, the, the Covered Bridge Cafe. I don't mind. I, I can reach out to him and find out, you know, how he picked Long Grove and what his association was. Why don't you do that, was. Pam? See if if that would be a, a, you know, if he would be willing. I, as we're talking about I this, I like this too because that. this this becomes we can use it for our website, our micro website. You know, is part of a bunch of little clips. But if we can also get another use and give it to the LG DBA, uh, that's wonderful. It's like using the bridge video in different places. So. Um, yes, I love it. I think they would love it too. Yeah, I think that's a great one to do. And I can also, you know, that could even be kicked to the future if we want to do one of the chocolate ones. If, if there is a, a good candidate uh, chocolate related that we want to do closer to Chocolate Fest, and I'm sure Eric would love to do it and would do it at any time. Sounds good, Amy. That's a good, good suggestion. Kevin's it's been really cool. good about it and does a nice job of leading people through this stuff. So there's our goal for April. Get ourselves a chocolate video. I love it. On the, on the, on the, on the video issue, anything else, anybody? Um, well, I, um, I edited a clip out from Kristen's, the Skycrest video, and I put oh, it good. up 
um, I wanted to get some feedback on that. And then I also um, uploaded the full video to the YouTube channel. Um, so I could, and I, I, I edited that as well. I added a header and, you know, a thank you. And I just kind of cleaned it up a little bit. That was really easy to edit. <laughs> so we did it right. For what time. you tell people. You yeah. Um, I'm still, I'm sorry. I've, I've been so busy. I haven't had a chance to go back and like clean up the, um, the Appel one is more fussy. So that's taking me longer. And I want, I, the one for White Oaks is posted, but I thought I would pull it down and add the headers to that as well. So, and I don't know if you saw, but on the EDC website, the drone video is now on our page and accessible. So you can um, open it and click it and watch it from there. And it, um, I think Denise, didn't we, we had to take it down and um, make a change because I had left somebody off of it, but we corrected that immediately. Um, but over in 24 hours, we had 51 hits, which is a, like a record for our website. So that's Absolutely. great. Yeah. That says it's getting some kind of word of mouth. Uh, hey, take a look at and that's what we're trying to build, I guess. Yeah. So that's all right. So we did get uh, just to make it clear, we did get uh, Dr. Kristen and she, she was really interesting to hear about how it works over at the, the clinic. Uh, and we're looking for more ideas, I guess. I, I take it that the, the people over at Matt's are just really not all that interested at this point. Is that fair? I haven't heard anything back. I've tried twice. If anyone in the village knows them, that would be great. I, I know they've had some communication, according to Bill, a couple of meetings ago about something internally you wanted to do, or maybe when they came here originally. So if anyone has any contacts, uh, Jenny, maybe you can bring that up tonight, just to ask. I'll ask. I know they reached out to us about working with the Stevenson students. Oh, okay. So maybe that would be a person to start with. Okay. Um, and then also, I ran into the manager. I know that um, Jay Levin obviously has more connections to Sunset, but I keep running into that manager. And I'm at the point where I'm like, well, maybe next time I see him, I'll just ask. I don't know if we want, if he's the person we want to talk to, um, but Jay brought his name up last time. So, I mean, he is the one that kind of knows long, you know, I see him every time I'm there, he knows the community, maybe better than the owner of Sunset. Um, and I also thought I might tap my dad who knows all of the Menards people to see if he would have somebody that we could talk to about who made that decision to come to Long Grove and see if, cause that would be a really fun one, I think. Cause that's a really oh, yeah. Menards. And persuasive too the larger developers so that's that would be great uh and i think ron over at sunset would be a <laughs> he's a good interview just because he's got a good right. personality for that kind of thing and we'd be all good all right so next agenda more report on more videos hopefully we maybe can have a fresh one yeah. so i are we on the drone is this drone video or are we not there yet <laughs> we're on the drone okay we're on the drone <laughs> So I, um, Rita was having a conversation with Jeff Perry, the village engineer, and through that conversation, it turns out they have a drone and they, cause they took that video of the bridge. So he has agreed to um, do the drone footage for us for the two TIF areas. So we're hoping to do, we're waiting for it to green up a little bit, but before it gets too leafed out, we, we just want it to not look so dead. <laughs> um, but one of the things I'm supposed to be working on is a flight path plan. So um, if anybody, you know, one of the things that I really want to focus on, and if please feel free to in, put input, um, I want to get the traffic on that where Lake Cook and 53 meet, you know, so coming from the south and showing all of that traffic going by and kind of then flying north is my thought. And the same thing with the um, 
South 15, you know, show that really busy intersection and then kind of scroll through the, the South 15 and then show the successful sunset complex. Um, so those are my thoughts. Um, but if, like I said, if you have any other ideas, um, I'm probably gonna drive through and kind of walk it a little bit. Um, but I think having, a, you know, with the video, if we do it slowly, we can collect snaps so we can use both stills and video from the same process. It's always struck me that it was brilliant to take that video of the village <coughs> after the fresh snow, that, you know, and when it makes a huge difference. Uh, so yeah, greening up, uh, it, it struck me too that uh, IDOT probably has traffic counts. So I was thinking I could try to call IDOT and see if they could give me some traffic counts so they could, you know, tell us when, I mean, we all have a sense of when it's busy on 53 and, you know, it's, right. it's in the afternoons when the cars back up way to the south and all that kind of business and they line up at Lake Cook and whatever. So, but maybe I could get some, some more detail about what's going on currently because traffic patterns have not been normal in the last year, to say the least. So I'll follow through and try and get that to you if I can, Jen. Uh, anybody else have any thoughts about oh, and doing these videos? Yeah. So I also thought I would, We do we want to add the Archer lots to this because that is part of the tip? Um, or are we focusing on just those two bigger developable parcels? Um, so that was the other question. I think it's a good idea to add them. Okay. Given the fact that we've got a resource now, you know, a, a little flyover right. is worth putting in the in the mix. Although our our video editor is going to get over volunteered. <laughs> Well, I think it would be easier. I think you to get a view, a little bit of a, a partial view of the down, of the you know the, the downtown area. So that's nice, you know, kind of. So that could be part of the you know the Archer Lots um, video. Okay. Um, okay. Great. Well, I will. Um, I will work. Keep working with Jeff and set up a time, but. You know, if you have any thoughts, just let me know. Um, and I'll that would be going. excellent. This is, you know, we don't know where this bait's going to bring us, but I think it's really good bait that we're putting in the water here. So, well, looking at the website, you know, our homework, looking at the EDC websites, I found the most, I mean, I, we're not there yet, but I, I did, I am a picture person. So the, that the first one we clicked on, they had a really nice like 45 degree angle of this, you know, the buildable space. That's very stimulating to, you know, like you can, whereas some of the maps were very flat, you know, it was just looking down like a Google, Google map um, with no depth. And I thought that it made a difference in my opinion. That'll be, yeah, it'll be an interesting discussion to see what you thought was the best website. And <laughs> I would probably have different opinions, but we'll see you know, when we get there. All right, well, before we skip around to that, uh, we've talked about the, I'm just looking at my copy of the agenda here. We've done the village infrastructure business. Uh, is, is it, we have on the agenda talking about the village budget for social media. And that's something that uh, there's a budget line item in the proposed budget. Yes, Jennifer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, um, it's, we have put, I think $20,000 into the budget to kind of um, spice up our website and add social media to um, our IT um, and media. So that is, we're discussing it tonight. Um, so if you guys have strong opinions and want to come and speak up, that's always helpful. Um, 
but yes, it has been proposed. I think there is some enthusiasm for it from some board members. So, oh, good. And um, well, I I cannot speak. <laughs> I've been reading a lot of resumes for village manager, and um, so, <laughs> but I'm not supposed to talk about it. So <laughs> we didn't hear that. Exactly. So, but yeah, the. Uh, <laughs> The, the number sounds reasonable, though, in terms of what we've learned about how much it costs to do these kinds of things, so that we yeah. could do a, a substantial upgrade that would incorporate, a, you know, sound in motion rather than just a, a right. flat image on the right. screen. And that does, I'm in Jennifer's camp, and uh, that makes a difference. Mike, your marketing, what do you think? It is, how important is it to have something beyond just a flat screen? It's important. The, the, the most important thing with any uh, digital media is content. So um, you, you have to have strong content. And, and this has been mentioned on, on other calls. It has to be uh, filled with keywords for SEO. Um, and here, but the thing with content, uh, video, gets, video gets extra points, if you want to use that term, uh, in search engine. Uh, from from the um, Google, um, and, and the word is escaping me. The uh, the, right. the, the criteria they use, yeah, algorithm. Thank you. Also, uh, the the more important thing, however, is the content has to you, you score higher in searches if you have fresh content more frequently. So that takes into consideration not only your website, but as you're posting on social media. Um, and, and having fresh, relevant content. Um, so one of the things that, one of the opportunities I think we can do that doesn't cost a lot of money is have someone manage, well, and maybe there's someone that does this that I'm not aware of, manage Long Grove social media, right? So obviously the, the consumer social media like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, but I think from an EDC perspective, uh, Long Grove should have... Um, a, a social media presence on LinkedIn because that's where business owners are going to do at least some research, right? And so if you're posting mm -hmm. things on, hey, look what's happening in Long Grove on LinkedIn, you're more likely to get in front of that audience of business owners who might be looking to expand. And so mm -hmm. I don't see, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. I don't see a lot of other villages doing that. So it might be uh, a, a way to differentiate that. So you can have, you can have uh, a Long Grove or even a historic downtown Long Grove um, company page on LinkedIn and, and have that profile that's for the village managed by someone at the village. And that is a good way to get fresh content uh, out there frequently. And the nice thing about that is it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, uh, a five minute video or a 400 word uh, blog post. It can be a quick, hey, uh, good news, uh, Chocolate Fest is back. We're anticipating 15 chocolate vendors and an experience, right? You can put a quick post and do that multiple times a week. And that actually helps with um, your SEO uh, if people are looking for either events for the weekend to draw people into the village or if you know if, if you talk about um what's going on uh on an official long grove you know not not just events but uh i don't know how you you could i don't know the legalities of mentioning what's going on with a tiff for example on linkedin but you it, i don't think you i don't think it's wrong to mention something like hey there's there's great economic development opportunities in long grove uh, you could post something like that on all social media, but I think because LinkedIn is is more uh, focused on on business, that might be a better place. And then the nice thing there is, whatever you post on any social media, you also post to your website, so you're getting that um, that that uh, credit for it. Also, uh, you want to have back and forth links, and I think we have that already. I, I haven't looked, but you should be able to easily get to uh, the website or even the EDC microsite from any social media post that's out there. So that's, you know, that's, that's been my experience that the, the more content you have 
that is of high quality. And, and you're right, Roger, video does help with that. It helps with engagement. It also helps with SEO. What, Mike, I'm not a uh, marketing, what's SEO stand for? So that's search engine optimization. Well, so that. whenever you do search engine optimization. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know the jargon. Yep. <laughs> yep. I'm sorry, I okay. shouldn't be using terms without without no, defining no. them. I apologize, uh, but if you um, could find some way to drop a little bit of your ideas, Mike, to to Ann Kitzmeyer, because she's okay. at least my perception the one who's championing championing the the social media aspect of things. She's very much in favor okay. of it from all I gather, and and this kind of ammunition will help her in terms of convincing the the, the rest of the trustees that this is money well spent. So yeah, Denise good. and I had a had an initial conversation about this. I don't know, maybe a year ago, and and it it there was a lot of pushback on having someone else, you know, uh, develop content. So <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I will be happy to send. I will be happy to send uh, my thoughts. A little quickie wouldn't hurt. Right. All right. So. Uh, but your idea is very good, Mike, about the cross, you know, the using using the same information both for our website and the social media, you know, the cross, um, you know, the cross use of the information would make it, you know, like maybe, maybe um, obviate that problem of, you know, what's official and what we can post and that type of thing. Yeah, so, I mean, here, here's what, Here's what we struggle with, right? And we've talked about this almost every meeting. We have, we have these. There's a lot of work that goes into the how they do it videos, and then we look at the metrics. It's like, wow, no one's no one's watching it, right? And that's because no one's coming to the website. But if we post on social media sites, and and I'm focusing on LinkedIn because I'm I'm more active there than anything else. But uh, let's call it Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Every time you do that, so let's say, for example, in the LinkedIn example, you post that same video. Hey, here's the latest in our series of how they do it uh, videos for, for long growth business owners and why they chose our village, right? Mm -hmm. We put that on the long grove LinkedIn page. Then every single one of us follow the long grove LinkedIn page, and then we post it on our own personal LinkedIn pages. So that way, it gets exposed to a certain percentage of people in our own personal networks. That gets more people to potentially follow the LinkedIn page, the long growth page on LinkedIn. And it's the same principle for, for Facebook, right? Although that's more direct to consumer. But the more followers you get there, someone's more likely to see that video in their LinkedIn feed and then they click on it and that drives them to the website. So that, that generates more traffic and then hopefully once they're on the Long Grove website, they're like, oh, let me check this out. There's a whole microsite for EDC, right? Or there's a whole drop-down tab for business. I'm a business. I'm thinking of opening a new one. I'm going to click on it and check it out, right? So it is a way to effectively drive traffic to the website because you have more and more people posting it to their own personal feeds in addition to any village feed that we would have up on the site. And so... Just, just you know, putting it on our website and counting on even if you had the world's best keyword list, you're not going to drive traffic waiting for Google search because we're just never going to get on that front page in most cases. So social media is, while it's a good way to um, get your message out, it's also a really great way to drive website traffic, and that's that's, no, what that's you're a after. great. That's a great idea, Mike, really, for sure, you know, because we could, I see what you're saying, you know, we, um, we could adapt what we, what we're going to put on the EDC microsite, but adapt it for social media, and then, you know, people will, um, you know, maybe post it on to their individual um, LinkedIn, you know, page, and, or LinkedIn uh, message, and, you know, you get it out that way, you know, to everybody's individual community, you know, whatever they have. That, that's a great idea. Absolutely. Mike, I just think wanted... about... Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, Mark, this is, this is Denise. I just wanted to say I very much agree with you on that point because I just looked at 
sort of broke down the website data. And what's interesting is, is that we've actually doubled our use on the website from with, with, you know, the, the new website as far as pages, but where a lot of that is coming from is through the links through the newsletter. So my thought is exactly what you're saying is that if we, we increase that, you know, not, not just having the newsletter, but we have those social media sites. I mean, I, I think it really will kind of explode the, the usage of the website because I mean, just in such a short period of time of, of putting very particular things out there, you know, through the newsletter, I just, it was, it was amazing to see the usage. So. Yep. So yeah, here's and, how that works. And this, this is interesting. So we do a news. when does the newsletter come out every month? Is that right? Well, we, the well, we have one? the e-newsletter the e comes out every two weeks. I mean, every, twice weeks. a month. And so, yeah. Yep. Okay. So here's what you do. That newsletter has on average, what, five articles, maybe? Like five to eight. Okay. So. You, you keep that every two week cadence for the e-newsletter e and here's what you do. It's not any extra work. All those five to eight articles are written. So twice a week now you take one article and you post it to the long Grove page on LinkedIn. And then every one of us on the EDC and the board and the planning and zoning commission and the downtown long Grove historic association, every one of us, make it a point every time that uh, one of those articles is on the Long Grove LinkedIn page, we like it and we comment on it and that gets reposted into our feed and then a certain percentage of our followers see that in their feed, right? And so yeah. you're, 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 getting, you're getting 10 times the traction out of the newsletter simply by reposting one article on Tuesday, and then the next article gets posted on Thursday, and then one over the weekend, maybe, or one the following Monday, right? And so it's the same content, but you're getting uh, way more uh, exposure to it as you piecemeal the articles out on LinkedIn. And that way, even if someone misses the newsletter or doesn't bother to read the whole thing, they might see uh, an article of interest that they didn't see in their e-newsletter, uh, they see it on a social media site and click through it that way. Yeah, and, you know, that way you know, in the newsletter, you know, we can also, you know, I know we're doing that, but try to focus on some of these things we're talking about, like the festivals and the things that might have a public um, attention and draw, you know, so that'll kind of yeah. um, boost not only boost our image, but boost attendance and everything else, you know, so you kind of get a, you know, I, I see what you're saying, Mike, you get a tenfold um, uh, reach that way, which is great. You know, I'm thinking of my own LinkedIn site and I'm not, you know, a great social media person. I'm not really great at that. But, you know, being that I, I worked at Allstate in, in real estate development for, you know, 30 odd years, I've got a lot of people that are on my LinkedIn, um, my followers, or I don't think they follow me, but, you know, just... <laughs> Your um, connection. Yeah, they're on my yep. they're on my, my uh, they're on my LinkedIn, and you know if I post things like that, then all these people in real estate development, people that have left Allstate and they have their own, um, you know, they work for other developers and they you know work for CB and companies like that. They're they're going to see that. That's right, and LinkedIn works the same way that a website does. If you post once in a while, you're so you know I I. I think I have 1500 connections, right? Which is, they say is too many if you, cause you can't keep in contact with them. The nice thing about having that is whenever I like something or comment on it, it goes to a certain percentage of people in it that are my connections, right? They will see that in their feed. It will say, uh, Mike Elliott liked this or Mike Elliott commented on this. It's always better to comment than just like, right? And the more you like and comment, the bigger percentage of your, uh, connections see that in their feed, and, and so it, it it's it's based on how active you are on the site. So if we make a commitment to say, okay, Long is going to put this on, and again, this goes for any social media. I'm just using LinkedIn as as, a, as an example. If Long Grove takes the newsletter and parses it out uh, two or three times a week with this, the content that's already there, now you're just 
getting that content out through a different channel and with more frequency. And if we all make a commitment to not only like, but comment on it, like, Hey, check this, check out what's happening in Long Grove. It can be as simple as that. Right. And that gets into more of your, uh, connections feeds, and then you, you start getting more traction. So, uh, it's, it's pretty basic. You don't have to be a big social media user, uh, to get a lot of exposure and traction with the content that we're already developing. We're just going to make better use of it. Now, I, and we're at the point right. now where we're actually going to use this. I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, you know, Mike Sarletto, if he was here this morning, would be very happy to hear this conversation because a year ago, uh, you know, maybe the attitude was not negative toward pushing this more, but it was uh, at best neutral. And I think it's changed to the point where the village has said, no, this is something very positive that we should get involved in. And it's at least in part because we've been having this discussion and it's been filtering upwards. So it's, it's an accomplishment for the group, I think. And, you know, that's one of the things that anybody uh, likes to feel they're doing when they're in a group spending their, their 7 a.m. mornings <laughs> burned on. Well, the nice thing about this is that we've already got the content. We already have a website. And, and if, if we need uh, money to make it better, that's great. This is something we can do starting tomorrow for free with the content that we already have, and we're going to get exponential uh, results out of it. Uh, no, it's a great idea, you know, because it's, um, yeah, you know, I, I, as I said, I just gave my example, but, you know, of my contacts, you know, maybe 25% are, are in the real estate development community. So, you know, that's it's what you like, want to reach. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's it. I mean, there are people that are either still there doing real estate development longer, but uh, at Allstate, but they've gone on, you know, to other firms. So you really reach quite a few people that way. The next item down, or the, the let, well, the TIF information sheet, uh, Denise emailed to me. I don't know if everybody else got a copy of it, uh, a draft that she and Mina had worked through on a, a quick one page sheet for the TIF. Uh, she couldn't make it this morning. Uh, Denise, is it worth talking or should we just hold off until next week when Mina's back or next, whatever it is? I was kind of thinking that maybe we should hold off just so Mina can, cause she, were you working on that with her, Jenny or no? Um, I was, I was not very helpful. And so <laughs> she <laughs> graciously um, offered to carry the weight on that one. So, um, no, yeah, I and I was not working on that with her either. So maybe it would be better to wait until Mina's here. Yeah, I Makes thought sense. it looked really good. I mean, just out of, I think it, it's a great start. The wording I thought was a little, there was a little wraparound wording thing that I think needs to be addressed. But otherwise, I think it's really what we're looking for. So I look forward to the right. conversation. Next agenda. So a uh, significant item on the agenda, I think, Bill got a call from somebody who is, oh no, Bobby O'Reilly developed this piano retailer as a possible whatever. And Erwin followed through on it. And it sounds like Erwin, is it fair to say it's just not quite time for them yet? Right. Here, here's the situation. And, and it was great to filter down to us here. Um, she's got two um, facilities, one in Waukegan, which was where they started, and they expanded to Niles many years ago in the Golf Mill Shopping Center. The Golf Mill Shopping Center, there's a proposal to redevelop the whole property there, and she may be decide to leave there, and she's targeted Long Grove because of the demographics. And she was really nice, you know, she returned my call, we had a nice conversation, she told me a little bit about her, her business, and she said, we'll keep in touch. As soon as she knows what's happening at Golf Mill, she'll let us know what's what. So I, I thought that was good. That's exactly what we want to have happen is, is just keep in touch. I'll probably give her a call in 60 days just to see what's, you know, how she's doing. Right. So the, the discussion, the email discussion with Bill Jacobs was, you know, we ought to find some way to regularize how we handle these things so that we know there will be a follow-up and we don't lose it from our agenda or whatever the case might be. Uh, thoughts on whether we should do that or how we should do that? 
Is there, is there some basic, I'll use this term, CRM system or some spreadsheet we can put together with this and then with target a follow-up? I, I don't know what technology we have in Long Grove to I do see, that. Yeah, CRM is the best way to handle it. And, and that stands for customer relationship management. There are a lot of systems out there. Um, Denise, I know you and I talked about this too a while back and I know you did some research. Did you find that there was a CRM system uh, that, that has like a low cost or no cost option for municipalities? I did not actually. I, I mean, okay. that was a, it was quite a while ago, but I remember finding that it was, you know, there were significant dollars connected to it. And at that point we weren't really looking at sort of expanding our, you know, uh, sort of those platforms, but this may be a, a good time to discuss that. And, and I think there are, I'll look, you know what, uh, if you want to put me down, I'll, I'll take this over to do some research. I know there are some very low cost CRM solutions that are basic, which is all we need. And the nice thing about that is that, you know, you can use a spreadsheet to manage this, but then it's not automatically uh, pinging you, right? Yeah. If you use a CRM right. system, you can pass and say, hey, Here's a piano uh, retailer. They showed interest. You log that into the system, and then you put a follow-up task so that in two weeks or a month or whatever time frame you want, it brings it up as a, a follow-up with this uh, piano retailer lead, right? Um, you can also attach emails. You can uh, document phone conversations that you've had. So that way, if there's turnover in the EDC or if someone else takes over the conversation, all of that's documented and you're not losing that uh, history of, of the interaction. Yeah, I, I like that idea, Mike, rather than a spreadsheet. Um, one other thing just to add, maybe maybe we could invite Alice to the Chocolate Fest or some of the festivals, just put her on the list uh, for okay. that. Um, maybe maybe I'll, I'll, I'll take care of that as a follow-up and I could send her some information. But I, I think what we want to do is, is, you know, if we had the CRM, we'd have a category there, hey, invite to checklist, put on the newsletter, things like that. Um, and I, and I, I, like Mike said, I don't think it's very expensive to, to get the software. Yeah, I think there's some basic ones that might even be free for, you know, one, one license or whatever, one C. Right. Well, that, that's something for our next agenda for certain. I think that's, yeah clearly something that would be worthwhile if we can engineer it. That's good. All right. Um, next hey, item is it, or, or when I liked your idea about inviting her, but you know, let's, let's, if we're going to have a ticketed event, maybe if we have <laughs> uh, people that are, are, you know, businesses we're trying to attract, we, we give them a comp ticket to one or both of the days or even to the VIP thing. Right. Uh, and I know, you know, I don't want to be giving stuff away that's going to drive revenue for the village or for the merchants, but it, it might be a small investment to make in, in, in doing that. I, I agree. And we should have, we should have, I'll call it a buddy system that someone that she could meet with at the festival to take oh, around and, and, yeah, and, and sure. do that. So, okay. And that yeah. would be, that would yeah. be part of our procedures we should develop. Agreed. Okay. Great. All right. Um, so now we're down to the uh, design of the EDC microsite and the other websites that have been shared for us to take a look at. And um, reactions, anybody? I'd be interested in people's ranking, you know, and, and talk about that a little bit and, and why why they ranked them the way they did? Um, I have to admit, I saw the ranking portion of this um, assignment this morning. So I, <laughs> I just made notes on what I liked and what I didn't like. Um, so I'm, uh, I failed on that. Um, I'll, I'll take the D grade. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I, honestly, what I it's, learned from this- It's pass fail. <laughs> okay, well, I failed. Um, so what I learned from this experience, in my opinion, is that I think actually our EDC site has a lot of what others do, and we do it pretty well. I just think if we augment it, 
we will, we're pretty close. In my opinion, I, I don't think we're too far off. I just think we need more photos. I mean, we have a list of sites and there's no photo there. And that would be something really easy to add. I actually think some of our tabs work much better than the other tabs. Um, I think decreasing information on the major websites was something that I found helpful. I like less words, more pictures, but then links that you could click to get, if you have the time, um, to get more information. So those are my initial, but I actually think we have a lot of great stuff on our website. So the F, the F grade is long. <laughs> Muting. You're inching up to at least a D minus. Yeah. Anybody else? Any? The thing that I thought was best was the the automatic, very short video when you clicked onto a website that just kind of grabbed me and said, "Oh, this is interesting. I'll stay here because I'm a sucker for for memes and video clips and that kind of business." Uh, and that I understand is something that would involve a little more uh, computing power than our site currently has to be able to have that automatic. But, but just the same, I got the same picture that Jenny did, which is I, I was looking for substantive areas of content that Long Grove didn't have or didn't touch. And I really didn't see any, you know, they use different names maybe, but they were the same kind of chunks of information. You know, you can call it demographics, you can call it local population, you can call it sales or whatever, but to some degree, everybody, including Long Grove, has some of that information on the website and uh, should drive people to come and see what it's about. Uh, I don't think that anybody had done a, a better job than Long Grove in terms of the the path the the diagram that we have about uh, the steps that you have to take in terms of getting a, a a business started that I think is a very positive feature. Right, I I, I agree with that. I think I think only one. I'm trying to see which website had that. You know, it's something similar with steps. You know that you can kind of visually see. I'm trying to see in my notes. Buffalo Grove had one, but it was yeah. not as not as thorough as ours. Yeah, that, uh, you're right. This, they, it was Buffalo Grove that had the steps that you could take to open a business. Like, yeah, but ours is just, I agree with that. Yeah, I think of everybody's, um, I, I go back to actually Lake Moore's, you know, from last week, you know, that they had those three big available site areas with arrows when you opened it up, opened up the page. I still think they were kind of the best. I mean, of the ones that we were looking at, um, Roger, I did like Lake Zurich. You know, I was kind of surprised, you know, because I thought they were very substantive in terms of available properties, business incentives, um, opening a business. It kind of covered everything and pretty comprehensively without a lot of verbiage. I was surprised. I really liked theirs. And they had... Um, a main one one thing I had, which I don't think we're going to have for a long time, but they had in the available properties, they had a distinction between the village, um, the uh, main street properties that were available, and they had a main street lease posted. Like I said, I don't, we're not we're not there yet, but I I thought for a simple website that wasn't too wordy and wasn't too hard to navigate. I thought they had a lot of information. I was a little bit surprised, frankly. <laughs> I mean, they I'm had like, a, hey, yeah, go ahead, Pam. I had an actual lease posted. Um, I mean, like I said, we're not there yet. That's way down the road. But I, I just thought in terms of, gee, I'm looking to open something in the downtown, they had a distinction between Main Street and, and, and the other parts of Lake Zurich. They had a lease for the Main Street. I thought, wow, that's pretty good. I, I was I was frankly surprised because we had focused on, I, I liked the ones we had talked about in the past. I liked Lincolnshire a lot, very comprehensive in their business tab. 
um, you know, where they had available properties and key facts and demographics and it, their strategic plan is posted, but they did not have anything about um, economic incentives of any kind. Maybe they don't have any, I don't know. I mean, that was something they didn't have. Uh, other than that, I, I always felt they were a great, um, a great example because they, you know, touched on everything. Available properties, demographics, their strategic plan is posted, the key facts that they have, a traffic count, everything. But they didn't have anything about incentives. So, you know, that was one drawback for them. And I thought Lake Zurich covered that. And um, really, if you were looking to do something on in the downtown on Main Street, you know, they had the properties, a lease, who you could contact. I was a little bit I was pretty impressed with that, you know, for a community of that, you know, and they're kind of a similar demographic community. So that's another one I think we could focus on. I thought the late one one from a few weeks ago was pretty, pretty good for our needs, you know, whether, you know, some of the pictures and some of the information. And I'm just wondering if we're being too harsh, if we're trying to get to 105%, uh, uh, making sure we hit everyone rather than 80%. Um, I really think a small business owner, I'm going to differentiate a small business owner from a Sunset or a Menards or a big developer is going to call someone at the village if they like what they see. And they're going to have a list of questions. What incentives are there? What about this? What about that? And I don't think we can solve everyone's questions. I think if we were looking to get large um, companies here, uh, the website may be different. That's not I part agree, of our I, own I agree with you. In terms of enhancements, you know, because we have a lot, most of the information, as you were pointing out, um, that these other websites have. Again, I think we need to take another look at that lake more because they, um, had when you open it up such a, a pointed um, picture of here's where you can go, you know, with even arrows, you know, um, you, know you, you click on the arrow and there's the site. And if we're looking for enhancements above just substantive content, I would, I would again look at that one because they just seem to, um, you know, really hit the mark. Mm -hmm. The, the analogy that popped into my mind is the, the, the way that people, well, the word boutique. We have these websites and a lot of them are websites that say, we don't care who you are, we can take care of you, which is, you know, mm -hmm. Lakemore wants the little businesses, they want the big businesses and they have the space to do those kind of things. Where realistically Long Grove uh, doesn't have that much development land at this point. And uh, is kind of a boutique opportunity for a very small range of developers. And maybe we ought to think about who those are and uh, scale ourselves back to make it very clear that we're not looking to have a, a UPS or a, another Uline uh, factory down here, but uh, we do want people who sell pianos, who sell unique cars and whatever. And, and we are great for those kinds of businesses. So if you're that kind and you're looking, here's a great spot. Being a little bit more focused in our, our website might be something to keep in the back of our minds as we develop. Claude? I, I agree, Roger, with you. We don't have to be all things for, for all businesses. There's too right. big of a variety. Let's, let's target it like, like you know, the, the piano place was great. And, 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 and I'm sure she didn't go to the website and say, hey, I didn't, she didn't tell me, I didn't see this here and I didn't see this and I need some information. You know, she did, she did some research on her own. And, and even, you know, another one we had a while back, the car wash that you know, wasn't approved, they did a lot of work. They, and they talked to the village about some incentives and, what, and things they were going to do uh, to yeah. pay for certain things. Right. So think yeah. about who the audience, who the business owners would be. If there's a big one like a Menards or, or some big company that's going to go into the, the next you know, TIF 2, their analysis is going to be much different than the uh, uh, piano uh, education program. Right. That's yeah. right. I, I do think that we can do this easily on our website by 
by highlighting our TIFFs with oh. the drone videos or the footage, that is much more open to a bigger developer. And we have to put those demographics that they're looking for there. But on our website, we have downtown open spots. If we put a video of this, or not a video, just a photograph of the open buildings. I mean, that's a visual that we're missing. That right. It's, we have these photographs. They've been in our new newsletters because over the past year, they've highlighted every single business in Long Grove. So we have photos of these storefronts. It can't be that difficult to input them. So you have that. Because, yeah, I just, and we, we are. I, I, agree, and we, I agree with you, yeah. Jenny. I mean, I think that's why I go back to Lakemore, what I like so much. You open the page and there's three arrows. And, you know, we have a pretty big land area in Long Grove, but the development opportunities aren't as, as large. So for somebody to navigate, you know, a, a town that has a fairly large land area, but maybe they have three targeted areas, I think we need to. I think that's a good way to focus it. Look at these three arrows. We have downtown, we have, you know, over by Lake Cook. And, you know, you have just, you know, really target three areas that people can click on and take a look at what's there, um, what incentive, you know, just have, you know, I, I think for us, it's perfect because we do actually do have a pretty big land area relative to where things can be developed and it can be confusing for people. I think what we need to focus on is look at this. These are the three targeted areas you could look at and it'll bring it down to a point where I think people can navigate what they want to do in Long Grove more easily. Because I think that is kind of an issue. So I, again, why don't we take another look at that like more site and see if that, you know, for next week, um, next week, uh, the next meeting, Roger, and maybe we can we can focus on that as compared to some of these other websites. Well, so Ian said to come up with three to seven like elements that we would like on our, did anybody do their assignment? Did any, is anybody gonna get an A on this? Yeah, we're all <laughs> I think we're gonna get an A, I was we're wrong in the class. We're back to past <laughs> feeling. Um, <laughs> So I, I did do my assignment, but um, so I, I guess I get a pass on this one. But I thought that was, that was um, what I came up with that is that we do ultimately have those key elements on our website currently. It's just elevating them and doing them a little bit better. Um, right, and I, I would say focus, you know, again, you know, cause you know, what I see is um, something we can work on is, you know, really highlighting those areas in a way that people can connect with them visually. Uh, you know, like, and that's what we've been saying, you know, that they can look at it and say, gee, these are, let me take a closer look at, at what's available there. And, uh, you know, I think, again, you know, from what I saw, I think everybody, we had a lot of the information that these other websites had, but I think, you know, that idea of the focus, you know, almost like the arrows pointing to these are our three areas and kind of give a little bit of a, a, a visual picture, pictures and some verbiage would be a great addition. I was going to say too, I... Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say um, with what you were saying, Jenny, I think I completely agree with you. I think that there are, um, when I sort of reviewed other sites, I thought we do have many of the aspects. I think it's just a matter of like, one of the things I thought we could do is because you can work on pages as unpublished pages, we can, we can sort of do a mock-up of something that looks like something on another website that we like and, and sort of review it before, you know, it would hit the website um, just to sort of see what it feels like and, and what, what are the capabilities? Are there things that are actually missing? Because I also agree with the fact that there are many things that we can do. It's just a matter of deciding what those things are. And, you know, it's kind of like the difference of the page of what you did with the video, the drone video. When you go to that, the EDC microsite now, I think it's just, it's, it's like, wow, you know, like that made such a difference. Um, there. So I, I guess that's 
but that that would be something we could do is just like come to it some some type of decision we want to work on this particular kind of page and then I could do those things and, and just sort of show what it would look like and you know what difference and the other part of it is our lowest site which is free to us that you can connect to from our website that shows all the different all of our different sites um, that's something too that you know if we got I don't know permissions of how that works with the lowest site but just as far as like keeping that updated making sure that because there's there's so much information you can put in there that we do not have in there right now we have kind of the basics of each of the sites but you can put pictures and videos and and I've done that with some of them that we um, I tried calling all of the landowners and business owners just to just to see what I could get back from them and I got what I did get back I did I did add there but sort of utilizing what we already have and almost like framing that lowest site as a bigger, you know, cause it's just, it's in two spots and, you know, it, in a way it almost feels like not that easy to find, but almost if we had a lowest page that is like, this is where you're going to find all this great information. So it's almost like you're not having to like recreate the wheel, you know? So. I know yeah, your I mean time is really valuable. Uh, and you have the most expertise with the website, but I mean, I'm, I'm happy to at some point invest some time working on this. Um, but I just think right now, I know you're spread pretty thin, so. <laughs> Question, yeah, is it I mean, possible like to put in uh, a contact point for Long Grove that's uh, just a generic, like if you look at the contact page now, it's got phone numbers and office hours and nothing further, there's no email address and something like bizinfo at Long Grove Hill, something along those lines, a generic one that could be specific for, because if they just, you know, if they just email Sherry or, or Bill Balling, uh, it goes into the inbox with all the other kind of stuff that they have to deal with as, as village business. Uh, maybe having a business inquiry point for email entry could give plenty of people access to the email, but it might be more focused. And I noticed that on a couple of other websites that they had an info at kind of. Uh, yeah, I noticed that too. I like that on, I, whose website did I like that on? I mean, it took some notes. I think maybe it was Lake Forest, I think had a good contact page. But I like what you're saying too, Denise. I think, you know, maybe, you know, like like one page in terms of, you know, what we've been talking about, bef like before and after developments of like Menards and, and Sunset. And then, you know, this other aspect of targeting available, you know, where the available sites are in Long Grove, maybe focus on those two aspects. We can't, yeah, we're not gonna be able to do everything, you know, but, maybe we point, we, we focus on those two things along with the context that you mentioned, Roger, like focus on those three parts of it to make, I think they can be developed a little bit more than what we have. So I think maybe we just like, you know, we talked about the three to seven things we would like to um, enhance. And from my perspective, I, I hear what other people have to say, I would say, you know what? What you know the before, what has been successful? Some of the some of the uh, these developments that have worked. Um, you know the available sites and then the contact information. I think are three things we could work on a little bit. Pam, do you think you can distill from uh, the minutes of the meeting a uh, uh, kind of bullet list of the things that we discussed as being valuable, critical, important to? Uh, Focus and send that on to Trustee Kritzmeier. Sure. Because that's that's basically what we've managed to do, I think, this morning in terms of talking about this. But it's, you know. yeah. Any other new business? There's a mistake on the agenda. I said the next meeting is April 11, and it is April 13. So, but. Uh, Fix that up, I suppose, or whatever. Uh, any other thoughts? So, 
the last item on the agenda is this book discussion and it's kind of a weird one and I thought, well, I think it's interesting because the idea of local patriotism, when I first read it, it was like, yeah, that's kind of hokey or kind of, but then I sat in on one of the Zoom roundtables for candidates for the village board. And the discussion went into this business about Stevenson High School and the referendum about, you know, who's spending the right amount of money or should the students go back in school. But what came out was that there are a lot of people, according to the people on this website who are realtors, who move into the Stevenson district for four years and move out. And I was surprised to hear that. Uh, and it just struck me as the kind of thing that wasn't particularly healthy for any community in the sense that you have people who move in for four years just for the high school and then move on. They have this very short term picture about what's good or isn't good. I got an email yesterday from where to go from Dr. Jamil, uh, who's running for the board and in the it wasn't an email it was a postcard and in the postcard uh, Dr. Jamil said we should oppose further use of TIFFs. I'm not sure why he's got some ideas and you know that's it's legitimate to say that's his idea and uh, we should develop an aggressive infrastructure program without really saying what kind of infrastructure he's talking about and if you're just looking at my current tax bill uh, and saying the TIFFs raise my tax bill for now and if you're saying you know whatever the idea of developing a loyalty to your town. I don't know how you do it, but I think it has some value. And I think it's something that maybe we should keep at the back of our discussion as we're thinking about what we're doing and why we're doing it. Uh, you know, Long Grove certainly has a history of people who have been very focused in what Long Grove is about. And the people I'm thinking of are people who are saying Long Grove is a lot about preserving natural area. Long Grove is about large lots and homes that are not close together, that uh, it's an area for less dense development. Uh, does that turn into a persona for Long Grove that all the residents are proud of? Or is that uh, creating a roadblock for development in the area? And, and to the extent that we know what Long Grove's personality is, does that inform what we do as an EDC? Thoughts? Um, I, no, go, no, no, go ahead, Jenny. No, go ahead, Pam. Yeah, I mean, I think they brought that out about Redlands that um, there was a lot of regional Im imprinting, you know, that um, a lot of locals came back to Red Redlands and there was an attachment to the community. And um, I think, you know, a, a lot of what they had, certainly Long Grove has, you know, they were very uh, conservation minded. It was 38 miles of, I don't know what they had, conservancy. And, you know, we, we have a lot of those elements in, um, in our town, you know, in terms of, you know, conservation and um, local, you know, a local focus in terms of business. So I think I did see some, a lot of elements of Long Grove in Redlands. You know, they mentioned things like the museum and the public pool and the library. <laughs> I don't know, as like, uh, as additional um, links that help the town develop that kind of aura of, of a place that you might want to go and, and, and do, do things in the town and meet more of the public and, you know, meet more residents in the town that maybe we don't have. But, you know, I think that's something we could take a look at when we look at some, when, when we uh, consider places like that. I don't think it's something you can develop. Uh, it's something that just kind of grows kind of automatically in the sense that. That's what I was going to say. Um, I think that, 
you know, when Long Grove was founded, it was founded by a group of really um, people that valued open land, and it was there was a different mentality. And I think um, there was you a lot say of anti-development. Pardon? You could say anti-development. Anti-development, which was yeah, part of what it was, yeah. But but yeah, yeah. Value, value open space. Good point. Yeah, they wanted sure. to be able to see the night sky. They didn't want street lights. They don't want sidewalks. I think that as Stevenson became a draw, people came in to educate their children, and there is a, a different need that those families want. They maybe don't want a controlled teasel, and they want sidewalks, and they want um, more of a neighborhood feel. Um, I reject that movement. I think, you you know, in my opinion, as a conservation biologist, I want the green space. I think that's really important. And I, I feel that in the future, we're going to be coming back to this because there's so much on how the environment is really, it uh, impacts us as people. Um, and if they want that, they can move to Buffalo Grove and they should. So I think we absolutely have to resist the impulse to become a community like the neighboring communities. If that's what they want, it's close enough. You can be in the Stevenson district. I think as a board, we really need to hold on to our roots um, because I think that, and I think that's, that's definitely, um, it's just this constant friction because I think people move into Long Grove and they want to change it to what they, they're, they're, they're needing. <laughs> they think but, they're needing or yeah. When I drive down old McHenry road, I think about a, a piece I read once about urban development and about the recreational value of Lakeshore drive. The fact that even though it's, you know, it's, it's a, an expressway with four lanes and lots of just the fact that they drive through this area where at least on the east side they have the lake and they have a little green space and all that and a lot of places in long Grove provide that where right. as you're driving home on your commute a lot of people when they go north at least from what i can observe turn left and instead of going straight up 53 cut down old mchenry road just not so much because it's faster but because it's just like a breathing space after a day of being stuck in the office or whatever and that's got a lot of value and we can sell that value yeah and i like i said i do think there is a movement towards this again i mean uh just it, like people are growing their own food again i think the pandemic has brought out a real desire for outdoor spaces and uh, i think that is a boom to us so how i mean i think marketing that um, but also <laughs> educating <laughs> the people yeah. that want the, the, the sidewalks and the streetlights. Um, so that's just 100% agree with that. Well, if we, if we go back, twist. maybe to summarize this, if we go back to our previous conversation about social media, the world, the world has changed, but I think if we can get social media involved in this process we'll get our our message out to a very big audience of residents non-residents business owners and potential business owners because the world has changed yeah and long grove is very photogenic we do yeah. well with photos and let's capitalize on that <laughs> hey, great Absolutely. And, and Irwin, go, going back to what you're saying, you know, what, what the author said about Redlands, I think we can learn some. I mean, we, we are replicating a lot of that. I mean, they, they are doing a good job of projecting a certain image of their town. And that, you know, that goes back to social media, you know, that they're conservation minded, that they're right. um, a place where people come back and, and open businesses that have lived there for, you know, a lot of time. And you know, we've got that. I mean, that's something we have. And, um, you know, going back to what you were saying too, Jenny, we don't have to do something that we're not, but we can make the most of what we have because we do have a lot. And uh, reading about Redlands, I, I, I saw a lot of Long Grove in there. Maybe we don't have that Esri, that big company that's a great employer, but um, we certainly have a lot of the other elements that that town has. And they did make the most of it. And I think that's really what we have to do is project that image. You know, Pam, it's, it's really interesting, you know, I have to what Jenny said also. 
is I have a lot of friends who ask me, so what's going on in Long Grove? They, they don't even live in Long Grove. Okay, what's going on in Long Grove? And it just hit me. I think, again, going back to the social media, that will educate them, you know, as to what's going on here and, and how it could benefit in the open lands and the pictures. And I, I just think maybe that's the next generation of what we have to do, because I think there's a new generation, Jenny, that, that does want the open space. And that generation also is connected uh, with technology. So I think we got a market through technology with the same values that we have here in Long Grove that we're here from the beginning. And maybe we should put a thing, big thing on the website, multi-billionaire, please come and <laughs> <laughs> settle down and um, be our benefactor. Wanted That was billionaire. McHugh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Anybody else? Any? All right. So our next meeting is April 13th. And uh, as Jenny said, if you want to weigh in tonight at the meeting of in favor of the, the budget for social media, et cetera, you can always zoom in. But uh, thank you all. On to our days, right? Have a good day, everyone. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye, Have everyone. a good day. Have a good day. Bye.